So here are the masses of each of those compounds again. And now what do we do? Well, when we've got the mass of each compound, we need to find the moles of each. You find the moles, and then you can figure out the empirical formula. So, I take the grams of the carbon here, and I divide by the molar mass. That's how many uh, grams there are in one mole. So the grams cancel here, and I'm left with moles of carbon. I do the same for the hydrogen, but see the hydrogen's molar mass is 1.01, right? Because that's the molar mass of 1H. And for oxygen, it's 16. Uh, and when you divide that into that, that into that, you get these numbers here. And those represent now the moles of each of those elements that we have in that original unknown compound. What do you do now? Oh, it's quite simple, really. You take the lowest number of moles here and divide it into each to get the empirical formula. Okay, so the lowest number here is 0 0.0174. When you divide that into itself, you get O as 1. If you divide this number into this number, you know what you get? Look at it. You get 2. So it's C2. Now, how many H's are there in this formula? You divide this into this, I guarantee it. This is what you get. 6. And that's the empirical formula of the compound. That's all you were asked to find. It's C2H6O or C2H5. O H. That's what I was getting at. You know what that is, don't you? Two carbons and a hydroxyl group at the end. That organic molecule is called ethanol. Yeah, I just burned some booze. In the solutions unit before, the one thing that we concentrated on was concentration. <laughs> and concentration, of course, is moles of solute divided by the liters of solution. Okay, so you know that formula and you're very comfortable with it. But now that there's three extra ones that you really have to know that are going to be very important, especially the last one, although it has a very weird unit uh, in the end when you do the math. Okay, so concentration, moles per liter, moles solute divided by liters of solution. Here's mass percent. Now, mass percent, we've been going through percentages, that's, that's, that's pretty easy to understand. The mass percent of a solute in a solution is the mass of the solute divided by the total mass of the solution. Now remember, the mass of the solution can be determined by knowing the mass of the solute, which you should know up here, and that's going to be added to the mass of the solvent, whatever the solvent is. Add those two masses together, solute and solvent, you get solution, right? Okay. So that's mass percent. You've got to know how to do that. What else is there? There's mole fraction. Okay, so a mole fraction is going to be moles of solute divided by moles of solution, which just means the moles of the solute plus the moles of the solvent here in the denominator divided into moles of solute. They get, that gives you, in the end, no units. All it is is just a fraction. So it's called a mole fraction. But in this formula here for mass percent, all of this gets multiplied by 100. That's going to be, of course, a mass percent. So you put the percent sign as the unit in behind. But then there's molality, which is abbreviated by written M. Molality is actually the moles of solute divided by the kilograms of solvent, not solution. Boy, that sounds just odd. But wait till it comes up later. It's beautiful.